Good morning, everyone. This is Paul Cones. I'm the president and owner of CourthouseDirect.com here in Houston. I've also got uh, Kurt Horn on the phone with us here, and Kurt is our uh, head of business development for uh, for our company. And uh, Kurt, uh, a lot of people know me because I've done a lot of these webinars, uh, and Kurt joined our firm back in November, and kind of give folks a little bit of your background if you don't mind. Sure, Paul. I've been a field landman since 1981. I've been a CPL since 1999. Uh, my experience has been primarily in Texas and Oklahoma, but also have worked Arkansas, Montana, and Louisiana. Um, I teach some seminars for APL. That includes the CPL review, day one of that, a uh, marketable title seminar that I developed, and also uh, field land practices, and, and speak on a number of different issues for both the national and local associations. Thank you, Kurt. You know, Kurt and I have known each other for a while, but uh, we kind of met, uh, I guess, back last summer, and we started talking about kind of how the industry was changing and how uh, landman's practices were going to be changing. And I think he more or less saw the same vision that I did about how things are, are evolving in this industry. And so, again, Kurt came on board with us, and we really are, are just looking at the industry as a whole and how things are changing and how we should should or, or should think about adapting to those changes. And, of course, uh, if you're looking at the headline here, you know this is where we're at right now. Is that, uh, it's that it's kind of unsure where the market is going. And But what our objective today is to really kind of show you some tools that we have on our website. There are a lot of people that may be on the phone call today that are very familiar with the site, but there's other people that are not familiar. So we some of this will be redundant for some folks. but uh, but we want to just at least give you an overall picture of the website. So mainly what we do is provide grantor-grantee indexes, image of the, of the documents that are filed in the courthouse. We go through and get all the subdivision plats and other maps that we can get in the area. Uh, we also build title plants for title insurance companies, but we also make those title plants available for oil and gas folks. Uh, we have some other tools on our site. One is an adverse lien search or an involuntary lien search. If you want to know the people that you're doing business with, do not have any IRS liens, abstracts of judgments, that sort of thing. It's a great tool for that. And then specifically to the oil and gas industry, we have a oil and gas lease search, we'll, which we'll be showing you more of in a minute, and also an oil and gas lease alert to be able to track where the activity is going on in the state of Texas. Something else that we're doing as a company is going into these courthouses and scanning pretty much every piece of paper in the courthouse. And that includes the historical grantor-grantee indexes, many times the handwritten records that are there. We're also scanning all the document images going back to sovereignty, not only the deed records, but the oil and gas records and the mortgage records and everything that you would need to be able to do a, a, a full title on a, uh, on a, a well site opinion or something like that. And we also uh, are kind of at the early stages of it, we're also incorporating a lot of the GIS mapping into what we're doing. Uh, kind of toward the end of our uh, meeting today, we'll just kind of kick around with uh, Kurt uh, uh, a discussion about the different opportunities and challenges that we have as landmen right now. And we know that the way we've always done research uh, or, uh, or in the past is we'd go into the courthouse and we'd pull the the grantor-grantee books and pull the instruments, and then we'd go back to our office or our home and we'd type our report, you know. But uh, our company, and, and I don't know if everybody knows about this, but our company started building real estate databases or grantor-grantee indexes back in 1992. And uh, we did this for Harris County, and if you're looking at those two trays there, that tray on the left is the grantee index, the tray on the right is the grantor index. And we started making these databases available to title agents and other abstractors out there. And this was kind of the genesis, if you will, of us building these, these real estate databases. Well, we were able to take that microfiche and put it on CD-ROM uh, a few years later in 95. And we were actually the first company in the nation to put a grantor-grantee index on the internet, which was back in 1997. Uh, our company, uh, a big part of what we do is build title plants for title insurance companies. So we're the largest provider of title plants in Texas for title insurance, and the underwriters uh, uh, insure our plants. So we're, we have over 50 counties where we, uh, where we have these title plants in. Uh, not all the counties are represented on this map, but 
we are working with all the major underwriters that uh, are writing insurance against our title plan. So I wanted to let you all know that because we're not just a, a bunch of computer guys that went to the courthouse and bought some records and put them online and said, oh, yeah, we've got this, this data online. So we take this data very seriously. It's a tool that we use to be able to do our job. So, uh, of course, this is the home page for Courthouse Direct. And if you're looking at the home page itself, uh, essentially across the top, it says real property documents, grantor grantee indexes, property reports, GIS. The way we make our money in our company is selling document images. So uh, that real property document button, if I clicked on that and then drilled down to the county where I needed to pull a document, I could just put in the volume and page number of the document I need, click on the go button, and then the document will come up and I'll click on view image and I'm looking at the document about as quickly as I just showed you right here. And then the other thing, as I mentioned, that we could do is go into these courthouses and scan these older uh, indexes. This particular uh, index has been retyped from the handwritten record, but you can see the 1876 document uh, in, in volume A, page 219. Within the same historical record, you can actually pull up the document itself and be able to uh, read that document. And, and the way that we've built our system is that you're not really charged to do that. It's only when you hit the download button is when you're going to, to pay for the actual documents. Another great tool that we have for the oil and gas industry is a lease alert tool. So when new leases are filed in the courthouse, you get an email saying these are the new leases that were filed in the county. And then this would be an example of what the results might look like. And if I wanted to view the document image, I would just uh, click on the left-hand side on document image, and I would be able to view the actual oil and gas lease or mineral deed or whatever it might be that uh, that's being referenced there. In addition to our lease alert tool, we also have a lease check tool. So when you go into a county and do a traditional lease check, then essentially what you would be doing is going into the tax office, for instance, finding out who, the, uh, who you think to be the current surface owner is, and then running a chain of title back on that surface owner, looking for any mineral deeds, uh, mineral reservations, and so on, which would tell you who you uh, are probably going to be working with on that lease check. And uh, But we've built a tool here it's where you can go into a county, put in a survey name or an abstract number, and very very quickly come up with the different oil and gas related documents that are filed in the area. So in the example that you're looking at here, some of these records are oil and gas uh, uh, leases, and then there may, may be other records that are pooling agreements or royalty deeds or mineral deeds and that sort of thing. So it's not just the oil and gas leases. Go ahead, Kurt. Uh, sure. Um, you know, I just clicked out there. All of these resources allow you to, to save a lot of time and a lot of effort. The, uh, the lease report actually shows you uh, not only oil and gas leases, but assignments. You have a good idea of who's active in that county. And then um, with the, the lease check, yeah, instead of having, as you said, to run that entire chain, you're, you've got a list of people who have executed oil and gas leases in the past. So pretty good chance that those are mineral owners and just gives you a real good running start. Gives you not only an idea who those people are, but also gives you an idea if there are any uh, current oil and gas leases in that area. You can also even see some that might be expiring soon. So uh, a lot of information available there, far faster than you could ever hope to find it by, by going back and forth in the courthouse. Another tool that we have here is our involuntary lien search, or what we call our adverse lien search. Uh, uh, essentially, a lot of times you are dealing with a company or an individual and you want to find out if there's any involuntary liens like IRS liens or abstracts of judgments or state tax liens and that sort of thing, which, which could affect uh, the people you're dealing with or who you should be sending the check to. And, uh, and so this essentially filters out all of the information as to any involuntary liens that might be against that individual or that company. Uh, on the title insurance side, this is something that absolutely we use every day. On the oil and gas side, uh, I think uh, Kurt's mentioned that sometimes you just want to find out if people have involuntary liens against them uh, that might have an oil well. So, yeah, this is particular help, particularly helpful for mineral buyers and royalty buyers. Uh, they've got a division order. They're fairly certain that this individual owns that mineral interest, but they want to make sure that there aren't any liens or anything else that would interfere with them getting paid if they were to acquire that interest. So uh, the question I would ask, uh, 
I guess everybody on the telephone is how many industries uh, have been doing things the same way for over 100 years. And I guess the other question is how many industries have survived doing the same thing over the last 100 years. And when you think about uh, what we do, I think, as researchers and as uh, landmen, a lot of the things that we're doing today are perhaps things that have always been done a certain way. But we know we are in kind of a changing environment right now, uh, particularly since the oil and gas business has had a, a tough go of it in terms of uh, prices for oil. Uh, but, the, but when you get in a situation like this where the market is changing and the technology is changing and that sort of thing, uh, then you, I think you have to adapt to that. You have to at least make yourself aware of what resources are available to you so you are taking advantage of those resources as much as you can. And again, toward the end of our discussion here, we'll, we'll kind of drill down a little bit deeper in terms of uh, how this is affecting the brokers and the landmen and the producers out there uh, in, in terms of where, uh, you know, where the, the, I guess the opportunities are and really the challenges are and how we should uh, be dealing with those. But what I want to do is just kind of do a very quick uh, snapshot of the different resources we have on our site, again, for the people that uh, may be relatively new to our site or landmen that haven't used us very much, and we've got a, a large number of people on the phone, so uh, again, it may be redundant for some, but essentially, uh, if I clicked on Real Property Documents and click on Available Counties, you'll see nationwide that we have 1,160 counties nationwide where we have document images. And if you look in Texas, we've got 177 counties in Texas where we have images. So, for instance, if I wanted to pull a particular document in Harris County, then I can just go into the county, put in the file number of the document I need, and I could put in a client number or a, a track number there, too, and to charge it to. And then if I want to view that particular document, then I just click and I'm viewing the document. So that quickly, I can just put in the file number and then click on View Image, and I'm viewing that document immediately. I could also look at that in a PDF or a TIFF. I have the choice to do that. The, the other uh, tool that we provide, uh, again, this is another free tool, is our grantor grantee indexes. So if I click on Available Counties, you'll see uh, outside of Texas, we've got a few counties in California, but mainly in Texas, we have all these grantor grantee indexes in Texas. Again, it's a free service on our site, but uh, what we do that's a little bit different from what you would see in a county courthouse is that we give you the ability to do what's called a sub-search. And so let me just show you a quick example of that. And this is my favorite example for people that have, uh, have been on our webinars before. But <clears throat> for looking for Anna Smith, who owned property in Harris County, if I run a, a party search, I'm searching both the grantor and the grantee. And we display 100 records to a page. And since we have 537 records uh, pulled up, then it says we're looking at one of six pages. Well, if I know that this Anna Smith owns some property in the, Mar in the, uh, in the Duckworth survey, then I could do a sub-search and say match everything with Anna Smith and Duckworth and run the search again. And very quickly, it comes back and says there's an agreement here or some other document. Uh, or if I hit the back button again on the browser and change Duckworth to, let's say, the name Marshall, because I know that she did business with someone named Marshall, then I can match th those two things. And again, very quickly, it comes back and says, this is the record you're looking for. And then to download the document, I simply click on Buy Selected Document. It goes out to our image database, and it pulls it up. And I can see at the top, it says View Image. So I want to view that document. And this is kind of a funny document. It's uh, Anna Nicole Smith, also known as Vicki Lynn Marshall, and they went on a little shopping spree in New York, and he bought her a $455,000 diamond ring and a $493,000 necklace, spent $2 million uh, that day, and put 1.6 on the American Express card. Well, I like this document uh, because I can take a common name like Smith and be able to drill down to something that's a survey name or an individual's name that she did business with. So that's the power really of these indexes that we provide online is this ability to be able to drill down to whatever it is you might be looking for. So it's not, we wouldn't call this a title plant, but essentially the data that is being fed through here is data coming from our title plant facility. So if you're comparing what you would get in the courthouse versus what we provide online, in, in most cases we've gone in and scrubbed the legal descriptions. We've done more work to make these legals better than they were originally. 
So another tool I like to show the landman is this tool called the property report at the top here. So for instance, if I was looking for an owner who I know had moved to California and I knew uh, just the last name and I wasn't sure about the first name, uh, then I could search California for anyone, this is my last name, Cones, and look for anybody in California with the last name Cones because let's say for instance I, my lessor has moved to California and a nice, this is a nice tool because sometimes if you can look at a signature on a mortgage for instance of a, of a, of a borrower, sometimes that signature may match that oil and gas lease that you're working on to be able to tell you that in fact yes that's the person I'm looking to track down. And then from here, if I wanted to select a report, uh, like a, a property report or tax information, then I can choose to do that uh, by, by clicking on these buttons that says, like, buy a property profile. So I just went in and just clicked on that. And essentially, it will bring back mainly the tax information. Occasionally, it will actually give us a telephone number for the party. And if you notice here, it will give me a vesting deed a lot of times for the, uh, you know, for the uh, property itself. So from a landman's perspective, it's just a tool to be able to track people down and kind of do like a quick asset search. Uh, I'm going to just click on GIS briefly. This is kind of, we all know that's mapping is where it, everything is going, right? So if I wanted to zoom down to an area on this map and look at activity in the area, this is uh, this is Harris County, so it's not really what you might call an oil and gas county, but essentially uh, as you drill down on this map, you can see the different survey lines and you can see in this particular map the different subdivision lines too. So we're building out these uh, these survey line maps in all the counties and then there's other functionality we built in here. We do a lot of work for engineers and surveyors and as a landman or someone that's, a, that's doing some seismic uh, mapping and that sort of thing, you have to maybe notify everybody along the so seismic route. Well, we we built a tool in here uh, in it where I can select multiple parcels and I can just kind of draw a box here and it will highlight all these parcels that I'm interested in notifying. And then I can create a report here called a mailing label report. I've selected 914 accounts I want to send mailing labels to and very quickly there's all my mailing labels right there. So that's a very powerful tool and it's something that we hope to do in really all of our counties and you can see uh, we're really just at the early stages of developing these these out but uh, but again we'll be adding different layers like pipelines and that sort of thing but so that's kind of in the future but I just wanted to show that to you kind of back to courthouse direct and some of these oil and gas tools that we have one is the lease check tool that we talked about so for instance if I if I'm in Anderson County and I know that the uh, person I'm looking for is someone named Cooper but I knew they had a uh, property in the Kimbrough survey, then I can just put under the legal description Kimbrough and search for any oil and gas related document that's out of the Kimbrough survey. But we can see that there's 455 records out of Kimbrough and the earliest one is 1983. Well, if I jump back to the, to the last page of Kimbrough, I can see the latest lease that was taken is, is at least on our database is January 13th, so just a month or two ago. And, we, and as you look at these, again, uh, these are probably all the leases that were filed the same day, but you can see it's not only the oil and gas leases or the memorandums, it's also the mineral deeds and, and that sort of thing. So to be able to do that very quick uh, lease check, that's fairly easy to do. The other thing is if I knew, for instance, I, I'm looking at this name, which is kind of an unusual name, but let's say, for instance, I, I was looking for any leases that this person may have granted, and I can, I can plug that name in. Uh, let me just type it out, N-A-K-F. Now that's a very unusual name, so I'm just going to put in this first initials, and you can see these are all the oil and gas related documents that were filed by that person. And if I wanted to match that up against E-N-E-S survey, then I could just hit the back button, E-N-E-E, -E, match that against those two things, and it'll go through and find where those things are matching. So. Uh, just a really powerful tool for the landman to be able to do a really quick uh, uh, lease check. Now we also have another tool here, it's called a lease alert. Now this is where you sign up for the lease alert, but I'm going to drag over on this other screen. This is, uh, oh, let me grab the right one here. This is our lease alert that I received this morning. Uh, and if you look at this, you'll see these are all the 
number of oil and gas related documents that were filed in these particular counties. So if I look at Midland County, I can see 231 oil and gas related documents recently filed in Midland County. So I, I clicked on that and uh, let me just move that onto the screen. So this is the actual results from that. And I can see, okay, Novus is filing a, lunch, a lot of things uh, back on uh, 2 two nine, so February 9th, is just a few days ago. And these are all the new leases that were just filed in Midland County. So if I want to look at this particular mineral deed or, or look at this lease, I can just click on it, say view image, and then open, and I'm viewing that particular lease document uh, pr pretty much that quickly. And then if I wanted to look, let's say, for instance, I saw a mineral deed here. If I wanted to look at that mineral deed, just open that and I'm, I'm viewing that mineral deed. So uh, again, to be able to track what's going on in the state of Texas in terms of where uh, leases are being filed and that sort of thing, just really not a better tool than uh, what you're seeing here on this lease alert. And again, this is a free service on the site. And, uh, and someone might ask, well, why are you making that a free service? Well, we're making it a free service because we want the landman to take the next step, which is to do a lease check and or search the grantor grantee indexes. So from here, you could just click on grantor grantee and then you could pick the state and county and then and then go ahead and, and run your search from there. So uh, so again, these are uh, resources that we're providing to the landman so that, uh, that, that you'll stay on the website and, and hopefully uh, do some more searching and buy some copies from us. Uh, yeah, the other, Paul, I'd like to, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'd like to reiterate, just uh, you mentioned earlier, but with that lease check, it's not just limited to oil and gas leases. As you can see in the results set there, there were, there were assignments, there were mineral deeds, uh, any activity rela relating to oil and gas, you can see what mineral buyers are buying in that county. You can see uh, what companies are, are filing perhaps unit designations and so on. So you can get a lot of, a, a real good idea of what type of oil and gas activity is happening in the counties that, you have, that you've indicated you have an interest in. Mm -hmm. uh, now, kind of back to uh, back to the homepage for Courthouse Direct. The other resource that I want to make sure y'all know about is this historical records that we have. So, if I click on the button here, if you notice it says historical uh, plats, deeds, and plats. When I click on that, uh, actually, let me just log in real quick. You'll, you'll see along the left-hand side a list of all the different counties where we have data. So for instance, if I just go into one county, I'll just go into Wise County down here at the bottom. If you look at Wise County, you'll see that we have the grantor grantee indexes, we have the oil and gas grantor grantee indexes, the, uh, uh, the, all the deed records going back to sovereignty, you see that 1856 to 1982, uh, and then keep going down, you'll see that we have all the oil and gas records there. So when we go into a county, we scan, our goal is to scan every piece of paper in the county. So for the landman, you don't have to wonder, well, uh, do I, is there a separate record for deeds of trust that I have to worry about? Our goal is to go in and scan those records. Uh, and if they're not scanned, then they will be. So, but again, in, in Wise County, we also have worked out arrangements with different, uh, sometimes title companies that own title plants, and we've worked out arrangements where we've actually gone in and scanned the records. So the example I want to use here is uh, in, uh, in Wise County where we uh, have, a, have acquired a card plant and we're making that card plant available to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the agents. Now any, any title plants that you want to access, there is an additional fee for title plant access, but, uh, but for instance if I'm looking at the, these particular documents, uh, and then I said, well, here's a deed that I want to get a copy of. I know that's in volume uh, 166, page 623. So essentially, it's kind of like working in the courthouse and just pulling a book off the shelf. So for instance, uh, this is Duke to Hall. So I can just go back, close out, you know, all of these windows here. And then I want to go to that particular deed that uh, should be uh, in this folder right here. Now, of course, we have real property records and you have deed records, so I want to make sure I'm clicking on the right one. So, so deed 166, 623. So again, it's as close to just pulling the book off the shelf and then and then and then go into the actual document itself. So, in this again, the abil ability to just view the document is uh, uh, 
is, is something that you you you're, you should be able to do just be able to by clicking on it and viewing the document. So there's no charge for that. It's again when you hit that download button that's at the top is when you actually get the charge. So um, so there's just a uh, the depth of data that you see in these counties is tremendous. I mean, again, our goal is to go in there and get every record we can. And I like to tell people the first thing we do when we get in the county is we scan the the handwritten grantor grantee indexes, and then uh, and then uh, and then we scan the deed books and the oil and gas books and all that sort of thing. So um, now again, I do want to make sure I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but there is a um, question and answer um, uh, on your dashboard. Is so if if you have any questions, uh, then you can either do that through the chat. Uh, or you can do that through the uh, question and answer, and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you that you have. Uh, let me go back to back to the home page again. So, a, a lot of this is is pretty intuitive in terms of the way you use the system and that sort of thing. But you may still have questions about how something works. And if you see these little arrow button, these are videos. So, for instance, if I wanted to look at uh, you know what? What was he talking about on the on the lease alert? How did that work? I could just click on the lease alert, and you would actually be watching a little video that gives you some instruction about you know how the lease alert uh, lease alert works. So uh, do keep that in mind that uh, we do have these other resources available. And again, today we are recording our uh, our conversation, and we'll be making this uh, recording available to everybody. It, uh, you know, after the webinar for people that were not able to attend. So, um, so I, I think uh, what I'd like to do is just go ahead and um, go back to our PowerPoint, and I want to go to. Um, I, I want to ask some questions of of Kurt since I've got him on the phone, and he's really our oil and gas expert. Uh, could you discuss briefly, uh, Kurt, kind of what what's the traditional way that an oil and gas crew uh, might kind of gear up to be able to do a to work in a prospect. Sure, and it kind of goes back to the question you asked on that last slide: is how many companies have, or how many industries have been doing business the same way for for less hundred years? And I think. You know, for the most part, landmen have been working uh, in, in very much the same way uh, for the last hundred years. Um, of course, we've added computers for for uh, drafting documents and so on. But when it comes to getting the information, in many cases, it's sending a crew of landmen into a courthouse, dividing up the prospect area, and uh, having landmen begin to research records and, and try to try to determine mineral ownership and tr or try to determine leasehold ownership, HPP, whatever you have. And it's not a terribly efficient system. It um, obviously involves a, a lot of travel time, which is which is billable time in many cases. Certainly, there are travel expenses related to that. Not only the uh, not only lodging, but uh, mileage and food and, and and other incidentals. And so you've got a case of when you're sending the landmen to the courthouse. Um, yeah, it's just not very efficient. Additionally, with a lot of these courthouses that have now become automated, they have some sort of computer system. It used to be you could go to an index and you could go find that book. Some of these courthouses have just a handful of terminals where you can do your research. You know, if, you, if you've got 500 books, you could pr presumably have 500 landmen working at the same time if you had space. But when you only have 10 terminals, it really severely limits the number of landmen who can work. So a lot of time is spent just standing around waiting for access to the computer system. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got into that next question there is that how have the online records already changed the oil and gas industry? So as you're saying that uh, there are sometimes you have a small room which is the courthouse. Uh, clerk didn't expect all these uh, landmen to come in, but uh, there are other resources there that uh, perhaps you could use before you before you head to the courthouse. There are. Uh, they're both public resources. Counties such as Harris and, and Fort Bend, for example, here in Texas have made their uh, computerized records available online for some time. Um, 
you know, I, I think the, the most efficient, effective landmen actually use those resources before ever heading to the courthouse, do as much research as, as possible online um, with, the, with the official county website. Now, of course, there's other companies such as ours now that are making documents available. And the same sort of thing. You want to do as much work as you can before going to the courthouse or perhaps go to the courthouse, do what you can do there with their online resources and, and follow up and then come back and use another source of information. All of this is going to, to save time and save money. Well, I, I did as we kind of publish, uh, publicize this uh, discussion today that we were going to have, have a frank discussion about what are the risks of using online resources, uh, and I'd like for you to address that too if you could, uh, Kurt. Sure. I think the, the first thing, yeah, the online resources that are provided by the counties, such as Harris, Fort Bend, Brazoria, and so on, those are pretty much the same system that's in the courthouse, so we know what those are. Um, you mentioned this earlier about Courthouse Direct. We are first and foremost, we're title people. We're not a data company, we're a title company. And so um, you know, we have a full understanding of what these documents are and how important they are and how important it be right. So I, th I think the first thing you need to know when using online resources from a private source is who is providing that information, where did it come from? And as a title company, the, the information that we have comes directly from the counties and our indices are keyed from the index of the county. If the county is already has a digital index, then that's what we get here, and we get those updated regularly. And so I guess the first risk is knowing the source of the documents. Were these shot by somebody in the field and then indexed by somebody who may or may not be in the title industry, or, uh, or such as ours, they put together um, essentially as an exact copy of what's in the courthouse. And so that gets you, you know, so that also addresses that quality question. What is the source? What is the quality? What is the integrity of the data that you have available? And how are the indices built and maintained and such? And then the depth of the data, no two, you know, what is there? And, and this was really important. With all, all of these are tools and all of these can be useful, but uh, you need a full understanding of, of what it is, where it came from, and how much of it is there, how it's organized and everything to be most efficient. Right. And kind of to follow up on what Kurt was saying just then, that uh, the, the actual original grantor-grantee data from the courthouse, we value that very highly. And so, but what we try to do on our end is to enhance the legal descriptions of the properties because a clerk is not necessarily going to spend much time making sure all the legals are keyed as they should be. So our goal is to really go in there and make sure, certainly if we saw some kind of uh, incorrect spelling on a name or something like that, we are going to correct that system. But, uh, but you know, our... The uh, biggest thing that we do is, is make those legal descriptions easier so that you can run the, the search easier. So another question for you, Kurt, is uh, what can producers uh, uh, expect from landmen and brokers during these kind of challenging times, uh, maybe something different from what they uh, had been experiencing before? Yeah, I think if you paid any attention to the industry at all, you know that these companies are, are really strapped for capital, really strapped for money to spend to develop uh, to develop their resources. So what they're looking for now, uh, they're looking for the best possible work product that they can get in, in the fastest time available and, and for the least amount of cost. And the traditional model that, that landmen have followed for years just probably doesn't deliver that. If you just have your landmen working in the courthouse and not using other resources or available such as Courthouse Direct, you're going to miss things. Uh, the more, more tools you use, the more tools you learn how to use, the more complete, the more accurate your work product is going to be. So that's going to address the quality issue. If you, um, and what I recommend, you and I have talked about this, is that landmen start out using our resources, give information that's available, and then actually go to the courthouse and, and double check back against the courthouse indices. If you do that, you have two sets of, of information and your chances of missing something uh, certainly are reduced. Um, doing it this way also reduces expenses, so you've got the, you know, this, this price issue that comes in there. You're going to be able to provide your clients with this better product. You're going to get it to them faster because you eliminate a lot of the downtime and you're able to do searches with resources such as ours that you're not able to do. Um, in, in a courthouse. There's only one count, courthouse I'm aware of where you can actually do an abstract search, and that's down in Jackson County there in Edna. But um, So it saves a lot of time being able to do a geographic search using a, an abstract number or using a, a survey and block, and all of these efficiencies are going to reduce cost to your client. And the clients are, are looking to spend as little money as possible but still get a quality product. Kind of a funny story. Uh, uh, Kurt and I didn't know each other very well, but I was uh, sponsoring a 
a luncheon during one of his uh, educational classes he was giving, and he had approached me before the class and said, Paul, you know I'm going to tell these landmen to not rely 100% uh, on online resources. And kind of my reaction to that was, Kurt, that's perfectly fine, because if they're using both the online resources to be able to do 90 or 95 percent of their work in, in, uh, from home or their office, and then they had to go into the county to double check that because that's what their contract says with their, their client, then that's perfectly fine. And, and the end product that the user is going to get or the uh, producer is going to get is going to be a high quality product because you've kind of double checked it in both areas. So, uh, and at the same time, you're being as efficient as you could be is, is what you're saying. So uh, I know I wanted to ask this question. The brokers sometimes use local landmen instead of the landmen they really want to use to save their clients money. Uh, what should brokers be doing now to save clients money and still make money themselves? Sure. Well, unless you're willing to move to the location of, of a project that's available to you, and by move, I mean make yourself truly local, have a place to live there and uh, and work out of that center, then you're going to have to do exactly what we're talking about. You're going to have to uh, to use tools that are, in, in this case, available remotely and uh, and do all the work uh, from, from wherever you, you happen to be at that time. And that's going to eliminate a lot of the concerns with the expenses, with the downtime, and so on. It's... Um, yeah, we really have to be kind of stewards of our clients' money in this situation. And, and and if you do this, and if you, I think, share with your clients that you understand their situation and what you're doing to reduce their cost, to reduce the time of your deliver, that you can deliver your product and so on, I think you're going to find uh, that either you, are, you have an opportunity to pick up additional clients and certainly hold on to those clients that you already have. Right. So the, this... Uh you know, I was talking to a landman just a few, I guess, at the NAEP convention and about the same very issue, and they were talking about, well, you know, I was, he was telling me that he was able to keep a jo uh, keep job or keep working for this particular client because he, he had three landmen working for him, and he was using the best technology and was being more efficient when it came time to say, well, who am I going to keep here? It was the guy that was using the technology and was being more efficient who they ended up keeping. So, so the next question for you, Kurt, is that, uh, do you have any advice for landmen who may be struggling during these challenging times uh, in terms of what they should be doing with perhaps education or cross-training or uh, maybe Im improving uh, other skills? I think we certainly need to consider doing all of those things. I was very fortunate when I started in this business in Oklahoma back in, in 1981. Uh, one of the guys who was training me said, you know, what you need to do if you, if you want to stay in this industry long term, things are going well right now, but they won't always be. And uh, really, kind of '81 was the beginning of that of that '80s bust, but we didn't know it at the time. But he said, "What you need to do is you need to learn how to do everything, and then you need to learn how to do it very well. In fact, better than most people." And what do you mean by by doing everything? Well, yeah, it really since the shale plays kicked off around 1999, 2000, up in the Barnett, and then going forward. A lot of landmen have become specialists. Uh, we have lease buyers, and we have mineral people who do certain things. They call themselves actually abstractors, and we have some people who do just curative, and we have some people who do just surface work, and so on. So I, I think the going forward, and it might be a little late for some of us, but you know, for any of the younger people that are listening, you know, cons consider all the different things that a landman might do, and then learn how to do those things. Well, how do you do it? Well, you can do it through and finding somebody who, who might teach you how to do it. But there's a number of educational resources available out there. Um, I certainly advocate anyone that's working as a landman be a member of, of AAPL, the American Association of Professional Landmen, and also um, a member of their local association. If you're in the Houston area, you've got three of them. You've got the Houston Association, West Houston, and North Houston, and they all have very distinct purposes. But the, the common thread with a lot of these is education. Uh, the educational seminars that are presented by AAPL and in fact, APL is looking right now on our task force to develop additional topics uh, to teach state-specific material. Uh, a lot of this material has been general in nature for a long time, but putting together a series of uh, state-specific uh, presentations. But uh, so the, the local associations are a great source of education. Uh, the, the local bar associations, for example, the Houston Bar and, and the Texas Bar, the Oil, Gas, and Mineral Law section. They have different seminars that can be very helpful. So I think education is very, very important. Uh, again, cross-training, if you're working with a group that does multiple things, um, 
you know, try to try to do something, learn how to do something else. If you've been buying leases, learn how to run title. If you've been running title, learn how to do title curative. If you've been running title and you understand title curative, well then due diligence is an area that I think there's going to be a lot more uh, demand for coming up. And uh, you know, the right now, well, I'll take it back a little bit. In the, in the middle of the uh, of the shale boom. Probably 75 to 80 percent of the quote-unquote landmen who are working on any given project were doing some sort of acquisition work, uh, actually active in negotiating, preparing, and so on, uh, for acquiring oil and gas leases. And that's shifted dramatically. Right now, probably 85, 90, maybe in some cases even 95 percent of the work is somehow title related. And it goes back to the resources that we have. These are title resources. We're title people. And so determining ownership, um, determining changes in ownership, determining uh, looking for involuntary lens in, an, in a uh, due diligence situation, curing title so your clients can go out and drill a well and be confident that, that the property they're drilling on, that they have the rights, they, they own the proper interest to do what they want to do. Um, all those things are just very, very important. It's going to be a lot more title focus from now going forward, really for the foreseeable future. I don't see a time within the next few years where we're going to have an enormous greenfield lease play where you just need an army of lease buyers. We're going to need people who understand the various title-related functions uh, traditionally attributable to landmen. And then the, the computer skills, uh, very important. Um, you know, landmen have to learn how to use a number of different software programs, starting with the courthouse. Generally, the county clerk has one program, and the, and the district clerk has another program, and the appraisal district has another program, and the tax collector, collector's office has another program. And we have to learn how to use all of those things quickly and well. And so uh, obviously learning computer skills to, to apply in the field are important, but also learning how to use our system, and then learning how to transfer this information into a spreadsheet, or learning how to use if, if not map things, but learning how to use maps and understand what's available on maps, very, very important. Because that's not going to go away. I mean, the, I'm sure there's somewhere, there's still a guy out in the field using a typewriter or maybe a dedicated word processor. But the, the landmen that are going to be successful, landmen that are, the, are going to stay employed either with a company or, or in the field going forward, are going to be the ones with the widest variety of skills, and they're going to be the ones with the, with the best computer skills. And a lot of these clients now don't don't want a land army. They don't want a crew of specialists. They want what we call five tool landmen, the guys who can do all of this. And one day they may be uh, they may be curing a certain requirement on a title opinion. The next day they may be trying to get a surface use agreement uh, so that they can get access into a, a drill site or something like that. And then they may be getting they may be extending a lease the next day. And so somebody that's that is capable of doing all of those things has a better chance of, of staying employed, of staying busy going forward. Mm -hmm. Well, those, that's all good advice there. I, I, I want to kind of remind people that uh, we're probably going to be wrapping this up in the next, uh, I guess, three to five minutes. And so if you do have any questions, please pose those to us. And I do see some questions on the screen here. But I want to go back to 1980, 81, uh, I guess, uh, uh, Kurt, you and I are old enough to remember those days, and uh, and, and we did have a crash back then. And so, uh, but I I remember there was a kind of an old timer that told me he said uh, he says Paul he says you ought to put your money away because you know this oil and gas business isn't going to last forever. Now I didn't listen to him, but uh, that was really good good advice at the time, you know. But uh, a couple questions here. I, I'm going to answer this first one is that. Uh, the person is asking about, do you have district court records in your system, or you, do you plan to have those records? And so uh, to answer your question, we do have, of course, we know that divorces are filed in the district court records, and we do make an attempt to acquire all the district court records we can from counties. But something you want to understand is that a district court record is considered a judicial record and therefore it's up to the usually the district clerk who manages those as to whether or not they're willing or able to release those records to us. So what happens is if the county's online with their district records, let's say like Tarrant County for instance, then they absolutely refuse to deliver any district court records to, to us. But uh, other counties uh, that are not so strict will provide those district court records and whenever they do uh, are provided to us then uh, then we make those available uh, uh, to our customers. Uh, so 
there, I do have a question about the price of our product here. And to be able to show you the price, I need to log off. So if you see, I'm going to log off here. And then I'm going to click on the button that says Sign Up Pricing. And, and so what we've tried to do with our pricing is kind of make it uh, dependent upon the volume of business you're going to do with us. As I mentioned, most of the, uh, or we earn most of our money by selling document images. So uh, if someone is just really trying to learn our uh, title plan or learn our databases, then they might sign up on what we call Plan 1. Uh, where if they're only going to download a few documents or no documents, uh, the price per document is a dollar per page. But if you're going to do any kind of volume, uh, most landmen will sign up, let's say, on Plan 2, uh, where the maximum they pay for a document is $4.75. Now, if in a month you know you're going to pull at least 22 documents, then we suggest, this is Texas anyway, we suggest that you sign up on the Texas volume pricing where the maximum uh, that you pay for a document is $2, uh, uh, but you do have a minimum of $50 as a minimum. So if you only downloaded uh, 22 or 25 documents in a month, then you would have gone past the minimum and that would have made more sense. We do have another pricing plan here we call Texas Volume Pricing Plus. This is actually geared uh, toward someone that's working a large project and they're pulling a lot of documents where we can get the document price down to 50 cents a document so it, it would be two hundred dollars a, uh, a minimum a month but you, you get your document price at 50 cents a document we really only do this for individuals we don't do it for the, the plans above are really as a company plan you sign up on those plans but the TVP plus is per individual so if we had two landmen working the project and they wanted this very low price for the documents, then they would sign up each with a $200 minimum. So uh, hopefully that answers answers that question. And yeah, Paul, I just might comment on that too, just point out, and it's on there and it's clear, but that's 50 cents a document, not 50 cents a page. You've got a 200 page assignment in there that's going to cost you 50 cents. It's just 50 cents a document. And um, yeah, if, if you're a landman and you're running title, off, off of the resources here on the system, that by far and away is, is the most economic way to go. Now, another question that we're getting is, do you have agents who directly get info per, uh, from the states for each of these courthouses? Can you get uh, more information in Pennsylvania? So, you know, if, if you look at our, let's say, our real property document and then click on Available Counties, and if I go to Pennsylvania. We do have 46 counties in Pennsylvania where we have document images. I don't know if looking at that list from uh, uh, whether those are what you might consider the oil and gas counties or not. A lot of the data that we have are in these large metropolitan areas where we're doing mainly like title insurance. But uh, you know, in here I could go into uh, look at a particular county and see in this particular county they have we have records that go back to 2003. In another county, we may have records in this case that go back to 1985. So, uh, so to be able to pull the actual document uh, that might be available in that county, you would just go in and put your volume and page number in and pull that particular document. If you wanted to just pull up tax information on the on the on a property, you could pull up the tax information, and then if it had a deed reference, you could go back to that document. So. The grantor-grantee indexes mainly are Texas, although we, uh, in the not too distant future, we are going to be moving into some other states. But that's kind of uh, some of that's confidential right now. But you'll be seeing us going into uh, into uh, into other other states. So again, any other questions? Please post those. Uh, uh, I guess, Kurt, is there anything else that uh, we'd like to kind of discuss today with the with the landmen that are that are online with us? Well, one of the things I'd say um, is that if you do have any questions, um, obviously, with uh, as to how to use the website, certainly, you know, we have people here who can help you with that. But if you have any questions as to just the overall concept of how you might make uh, your particular, whether you're an independent, whether you make your service more attractive to clients, or you're a broker, some of the things we could do for you, um, certainly feel free to give me a call, and, and I'll give you my cell number is two eight one three eight nine nine six three five. 
Again, 281-389-9635, and I give you that because I'm out of the office quite a bit, uh, doing various things around the state and really around the country. But um, and additionally, if you are in-house, if you're an attorney who happens to be listening, or if you're a landman who would rather spend your time doing landman work rather than standing in line, it's also possible for us to do these searches for you and provide you with some data packages, which would be uh, the indexes and, and a list of all the documents and actual copies of the documents, things that we can put together here internally. We can do them much faster and uh, and for much less or, or much lower total cost than, than certainly sending somebody out in the field. I've had some guys say, oh, are you trying to put field landmen out of business? No, not at all. We'd rather have you doing landman work than, than doing clerical work or standing in line or traveling or doing the various things that, that are not productive. And I think your client would probably have you, I'd rather have you doing those things also. So it's entirely possible that you know, by getting some of this data directly from us, you can attract and or retain quality clients because they're going to be impressed at the at the quality of your work and and, and the cost to, the reduction in cost of delivering that work to them. Be more one other thing I'm, that with you also. I'm sorry. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out is that uh, on Courthouse Direct, if you go to the bottom of the page here, we do have some other companies that we own, but particularly I want to point out Courthouse Square to you. This is actually a free service to get listed on. And let's say, for instance, I was looking for uh, a field landman in Texas, and I was looking in, uh, let's say, a county. I'm looking for someone in, uh, let's say, Brazoria County, for instance. Uh, this is, has a lot of different real estate-related companies, but in the case of uh, the oil and gas landman, I'm looking for a field landman. And so these are the people that are listed uh, that can do field work uh, in that area. So what I would encourage you to do is to uh, Find this button that says become a member and just sign up. It's actually a free service to be listed. It's a free service for people to search. And we're just dry. when people ask us, well, can you recommend a landman in this area? That we what we typically do is just point them to Courthouse Square and it makes it very easy for them to be able to go to go there. And uh, of course, most landmen, uh, if you're like me, you you like county courthouses, and we happen to have um, ran across a gentleman that was collecting postcard pictures of courthouses. And so uh, he had 20,000 postcard pictures of courthouses, and we were lucky enough to be able to put those on our website. So I happened to just click on Baylor County, Texas, and you can see kind of the different, how the courthouse has changed over the years. And, uh, and so uh, if, you, if you like courthouses and you kind of like to look at these older pictures and that sort of thing, you could just pick the, <coughs> excuse me, pick the county and you can go there. We also kind of created a little street view button here too, so if I want to kind of look at what the what the street looks like uh, currently, that's another little kind of fun thing that you can do, uh, you know, using this uh, using this tool. But again, that, that website again is courthousesquare.com. Uh, if you're not familiar with it or have not seen it, you just go down to, to the bottom of Courthouse Direct and you'll see the Courthouse Square uh, icon there. Um, so, uh, and so another question that I'm getting, can you request a document and send a runner if it's not online? We do have a doc retrieval company here that does document retrieval. I would tell you we're probably not always the cheapest uh, just because that's not something that uh, you know we're trying to be the cheapest in. But again, uh, back to your question that if I were looking for a document retriever, you see the category there is doc retrieval, and then I could pick uh, the state and county again the same way. I'm looking for someone to do a doc retrieval for me in Anderson County. I can see these. There, there's actually a title company that listed there. So sometimes you might be able to reach out to those folks and say, "Hey, can you run down to the courthouse and go pick up that document for me?" So, uh, and the way these these companies are listed below is people that are closest to the center of the county that you've chosen. So again, if you wanted to have this person go across the street and pull the copy, maybe they'll charge you less than someone had to drive over there to do it. So <clears throat> let's see. Uh, well, I think that's really kind of all we have and uh, really appreciate everybody being here today. Kurt, I appreciate your uh, input and insight and uh, kind of as we as we move forward, I, I, I think that, um, that people are looking to find the best tools they can. Uh, again, expand on what uh, 
Kurt said, if you want to reach out to our customer service area, you can just type in information at courthousedirect.com. That will take you straight to our customer service folks. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. And my direct line number here is 713-683-4012. Uh, again, we really appreciate everybody uh, spending some time with us this, this morning. And uh, I hope you go out and have a, have a nice day today. Thank you all.